Thank you. Um, I was probably about nine years of age when I learned about occupational health. Have you heard of the term uh, black lung? And if you worked in Wales, what would be the cause of that? Cold. 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 Uh, my mother, uh, she, she was from Wales, she was a nurse, and uh, she worked from Bridge End, and I used to hear terms like uh, pneumoconiosis and, and black lung disease. And, you know, I used to hear the suffering that people would have later in life from, from basically breathing. So they were, they were getting illnesses just from breathing at work, which sounds horrendous. And now we're here today, basically, again, further talking about occupational health and whale fume has been one of those causes now for our concerns for our, for our health. So all I'm going to do is really just give you a bit of a story of our journey, you know, because uh, we all seen the reclassification and then we had to go about make sense of it. Uh, there's like, where do you go? Who do you ask? What sort of money is going to cost? You know, the effects it's going to have on the business. Uh, and then just identifying all the suitable uh, uh, control measures. We are quite unique in our company. You know, uh, Katrina talked about, you know, trying to, the actual facilities itself, trying to incorporate crainage and still trying to contain the welding fumes. Uh, so we'll sh show you a few of those examples. And just the benefits, you know, it is about employees' health, but we can see some financial uh, uh, competitiveness coming out of this as well. You can see how hard it is to get welders if anybody's been trying to search that for, for recruiting welders. And they are getting savvy. They, they want to go to companies where they know they're going to be safe doing welding. So this has become a, a, a good selling point for the company. So just a bit of information about uh, where I work. We are a global company. We have 11 uh, manufacturing plants all around the world, but I'm just going to focus mainly on our Craig Avon plant. And this is just a wee short two minute video, which will give you a feel for the size of it. It's a 500,000 square feet uh, facility. Uh, the dark covered roofs is our new extensions. This is uh, one of our new buildings, which is getting ready for our new uh, forklift truck range for 2022-23. Material handling, very important. We have roughly around about 60,000 material moves every single month. Uh, so new kitting processes. And we're gonna talk obviously about welding. A lot of money has been spent on new technology that likes these multi-access uh, robots. We still have a lot of manual welding and we'll talk about that shortly as well. The <laughs> Uh, you can see the assembly areas here. We've actually spent a lot of money on new tooling. There's roughly about 700 new tools that help reduce uh, manual handling issues and just basically improve the quality. So in every part of our, our, of our factory, not just welding, but we're starting to improve the safety of our employees using sort of new technologies uh, to improve. You can see some of the lifting devices that we're using to manipulate some of our parts. But with new technology comes other issues, you know, it's being trained to use them properly, it's how to maintain them, and we currently build 11,000 forklift trucks a year. It takes 7,436 steps to actually build a truck. So that means nearly over 80 million job steps a year we have to ensure there's no risk to employees' health or safety. So we all seen the message. <laughs> you know, mild steel welding fuel can cause lung cancer. So it's about making sense of it all. You know, who do you go to? Who's going to give you the advice? And to be honest, I did something actually probably radical what most people don't do, and that's actually rang the HSC. <laughs> you know, they are, I don't know about, they are the enforcement agency, but you can see from today, like they are here to promote health and safety. So I did get speaking to Katrina at the time, and we discussed 
the situation in Heister. Um, and it was just, you know, here's the information you can get on the site, here's uh, guidance, here's videos, etc. But she also set up uh, a benchmarking visit for, for us with another company on torch extraction. So again, that was just sort of getting a feel of what we need to do because I was going to have to go to management and obviously say, look, there's something serious we're going to have to do over the next few years. So if you look at the, the slide here, it's about what does it mean to us? We actually have 30 robots on 69 well plants, and you can see roughly around about 44 tonne of weld wire is actually used in the year. We have 80 full-time welders, uh, and that sort of is about 150,000 work hours uh, welding, uh, maintaining our trucks. But we also have to think of other people. You know, we have all the transactions from material handlers, maintenance tasks, engineers, operators, visitors, contractors, all of them could be affected by uh, welding fume. And as it's classified, we're high intensity welding, so we're gonna have to focus purely on extraction at source. So how do we start? Well, there's six key steps there. Obviously, after talking to uh, Katrina, we, we had the background to start the communication with senior management. Because if it's going to cost money, they're going to have to supply money, resources. So we did have a designated team, and we, are, we have been meeting once every two weeks to discuss well fume project. Uh, we've completed a gap analysis, basically what our state of our factory is at the minute, where we need to get to. And again, you meant, Katrina mentioned about the right people on the team. You know, this was getting the area manager, maintenance, projects, HR, people who can make the decisions and release the money to make sure that the project uh, follows through. And then, very important, we keep saying, you know, talk to your customers, talk to your employees. Uh, we've just basically used the safety alert that the health and safety executive actually released. We just put that straight out. There was no fluffiness around it. This is how it is. So they knew exactly what we meant by it and uh, what our current plans are. We then set up a Q&A uh, session with them. And it's strange, you get, I've been working in welding for 35 years, why the change now? You know, so you have to go through the reasons from the, the statistics of, of how it could cause harm. And then they were asking, well, are you gonna get rid of welding? Are you gonna move us out of the factory? How good is extraction? So they were all asking the right questions. So over the, over the, the, the months after that, with every sort of change that we made on our processes, we updated the employees. Elimination-wise, our new truck has become more modular, so there is some bolt-on processes rather than welding. And we did look around the substituting. We're all, 99% of ours is all MIG weld. So we did look around some of the types of welding or weld wire that we were using. But most of it was all focused, purely focused on our engineering controls. So this is the brief that we give to our employees, which is just reminding them the sort of controls we do have in place, and then later on we'll show them where we want to go in the future. So we did talk, heard Contain talk about general extraction that's not being accepted, but we do, we did part of this process to try and improve the overall uh, air quality, as in we used to have about eight uh, changes per hour of the shop floor. Now that's around about 10 or 11 complete hour changes every hour. Uh, we have the towers. We have uh, robot and complete uh, robots and clothes and closed extraction. It's probably the most effective process we have, but it can only do small parts, so it's very niche for that particular job. Then the third one is static extraction, where you have a robot that just stays in one place that had a different process where it can stay static. The fourth one was a portable robot where it's moving from not degrees to 180 degrees. And obviously you need the process to follow that and also allow creenage of parts into the area. We have a few push pull systems. The, the problem is it takes up quite a large footprint. So in the right location, it does work, but sometimes you have, we had to try other options. And then, obviously, with the torque extraction, we're, we're introducing that into all the work cells. And then, lastly, the PPE. We always did have our fed masks. We just didn't have the inner shield that people could use so they can have constant air, uh, clean air 
the full time they're actually working in the area. So they were all. Our biggest issue is our transient workers. Our factory is like a big shoe box. It's just all open. So we actually had to cordon off the area. Some areas were cordoned off just with fireproof curtains. Uh, the main assembly and, and manufacturing was closed off with corrugated iron, uh, steel, sorry. And again, that was to create that sort of barrier, to create maybe a positive negative pressure to, to improve the, the effects of extraction. It's just a wee simple video we're trialling. Uh, you can see how much fumes actually is around the operator on the left with no extraction compared to the Torx extraction on the right hand side. But again, like Katrina says, it depends on the location on how you're actually welding. This particular operator is obviously directly over it. We have some manipulating cells that rotate, and that can be a bit harder for it to actually uh, use the torch very effectively. This is, we tried various options, you know, by in our maintenance department just trialing the torches. This is actually our fourth generation of torches. The first one was, you could see, actually using cap, uh, capped ends or open ends, again, just to see how effective the actual draw was on the torch. But it just shows you technology, even in the early years, just wasn't that effective. And then as it went on over this past sort of year or two, we have now gone on to the fourth generation of this. Um, we also had to employ some experts from the likes of Lev, uh, Lev Air, and they would probably design some extractions for us to suit our robot cells. This is one robot which is actually supplying our welding two fixtures, rotating fixtures. So again, it's just making sure there's no interference. So you're using some expertise on, on still maintaining the, the quality of the, the welding but also introduce the extraction. And even when we got extraction in from a lot of companies, it wasn't just straight off the shelf. We we're always having to test it to see where the best location would be uh, to use it. You can see some of the uh, maintenance just using simple cardboards to see can they maximize the draw, make sure it wasn't being uh, distributed uh, downstream. And then once the test of that then were fabricated actual walls or else used uh, fire retardant uh, uh, covers. You can see just an example, we, used to, we tend to use the smoke bombs first, which would just uh, see the direction of the air uh, blowing across the smoke and obviously making sure it gets into the extraction zone. The last thing is really PPE. Um, you know, we've got the air-fed ma masks, but we want them to make sure they use them correctly. Even basic things, making sure they've got the right filters and it's good work in order. We, we use a trainer who does uh, audits and compliance every single month, which basically checks the guys. And he does find sometimes the guys don't change the filters or don't look after them properly. So again, it's just that belts and braces to make sure if it is the last sign of offence that you are using it uh, correctly. We also use an uh, external company for hygiene surveys. Although there's no working limit for, for welding, we still need the constituents within it. We can trend over this past sort of five years that we're getting less and less emissions from, say, iron, magnesium, nickel, etc. And we do the same for oil mists and also for inhalable and respirable dust. So again, it's just showing that trend, and we, we, we plan a survey after every immediate sort of or major change that we do out on the shop floor. This is our final sort of plan that we're working off. These are all actual well cells, and you can see it's not one, one sort of control fits all. We have enclosed canopies, we have push pull systems, we have on torch extraction. And we still have areas planned in, actually, which I'll show you the plan next uh, to cover those. But we also have to plan in for our legacy product because we're moving to a new truck. The sales are, some of them are going to come obsolete, some will move. So again, it's just having that flexibility that we can move the extraction uh, to the new locations. And we are looking at biological monitoring, and that's where you're asking employees to maybe supply uh, urine samples for further surveillance. 
And we haven't started that, but certainly if anybody has done something like that, I would, I would like to hear. And our general health monitoring, which is carried on by our on-site nurse, and this is just uh, some of the stats from one that was done last year, over 165 people. We cover manufacturing once a year, assembly twice a year, or once every two years, and office once every three years. And you can see that there was about 7% did actually say they experienced some chest breathing issues over the past few years. When we look back at our previous uh, surveillance, it would only be a few. So I don't know the fact of highlighting that welding can cause issues has now all of a sudden uh, maybe raised the feel as if this is a concern. But we follow up on every issue. And if we do need to send them on to our local GP for health surveillance, and further, uh, further checks, we will do that. We actually have our own occupational risk assessment specifically for this, which includes obviously noise, skin, eye, mental health risks, etc. But we do have a job specific risk assessment for weld as well. <coughs> this is our agree spend for 2023 because it's still, we're still uh, closing off our final actions. There's three has just been completed in the last few months where we've used various systems, push pull, canopy systems. In yellow, all the material has been purchased, it's more or less being worked on. And then the final in white is where we've got the PER signed off. So that's, there's a huge investment in that, but the, com the company has committed to this since the early stages uh, of the project. And then just to finish off, benefits. You know, we do talk about uh, the healthy employees is the main, uh, main reason, but also corporate responsibility has shown that we, we, we've taken this serious, people's health uh, within the company. We've successfully recruited around 20 uh, new welders. Like I say, they're, they're asking for the type of factory that they're going to. We actually do the recruitment testing in the actual weld area so they know exactly where they're going to and where they're going to work. Then now, because it's now extraction has just been part of our line design, so going forward, hopefully we don't need to have a project team set up. It'll just be part of our process. It'll be embedded, and our engineers will just be making sure that uh, uh, we're meeting the, the legislation. And it's a good way of showcasing the plant. When we finally get to our area, we still have a few things to do, but I think it definitely we would like to think that we're best in uh, market for the likes of welding. And what I'm pretty impressed about all through this project for the past, past few years is that our day rates have actually gone up 50%. Our head count's gone up about 10%. We're implementing a new forklift truck range, which is new tooling processes, product development. And this has all been going on during global material shortages and COVID. So I think it's pretty impressive that we've still managed to tackle not just this new risk, but also our traditional risks as well. So uh, that, that has been the success, success of the, the project. We say them words, duty of care. Well, it's quite simple for me. You know, I do care because I've worked there 27 years. Um, I've I play a sport with the people who work there. I've gone to weddings, I've gone to Christmas parties, and certainly it's that cure. Nobody needs to ask me to not cure about the, what's happening to employees. But I need people from the top, and the good thing is the company has seen this as a first priority for the company. So hopefully we'll continue to make sure that uh, employers or employees will, will be safe from uh, welding in the future. Okay, thank you. <laughs>